So let's say you're out taking photos, the wind's howling, it's raining sideways, you're getting these epic shots, and this is how you feel. This is so epic! I need more photos! But then you get home, you look at your computer screen, and you think to yourself, these are a lot less exciting than I remember. Well, in this video, you're gonna learn how to stop your photos from feeling like this, and start making them feel like this. My name is Brennan from BeWillCreative.com and today we're going to learn how to make your photos look and feel a lot more dramatic like a viking storming the beach and not like a Pinterest board telling you brownie recipes. The process of making your photo look more dramatic is pretty straightforward and we're going to walk through the step-by-step -step process here in Lightroom. So once you have your photo here in Lightroom what we have to do is start by correcting our exposure around because right now this image doesn't look too bad but it doesn't have that dramatic mood feel that we're going for. To achieve that type of look, we need to do a couple of specific adjustments. The first thing is we need to have a darker exposure favoring lots of contrast because that's what makes things pop and look a little bit more dramatic in your images. The next thing we need to do is deal with our colors. We don't want to make things look too colorful, but we don't want to desaturate stuff completely, so we'll have to do some selective color adjustments here. Luckily, that's very straightforward. And then lastly, we can go through and do some selective adjustments to bring it all together and finalize that nice gritty look that we're going for. So let's start things off with our exposure adjustments. Now, this is gonna vary depending on your particular photo, but in this case, I already have a pretty bright background. So I'm just gonna maybe darken things down a little bit with the exposure slider. This will just darken the entire exposure at once and give us a better starting point for this look. Now I'm gonna go through the highlight shadows, whites and black sliders and refine some of the exposure to add some contrast without losing too much detail. So I'm gonna drag up the shadows just a touch but then I'll bring down the blacks it's gonna retain some contrast there for me now since I want to darken a lot of the background here I'm going to bring down my highlights that's gonna make our ocean in the sky look a little bit more moody but then I'm gonna bring up the whites just a touch so things don't look too flat in our photo so now we have a pretty good starting point for the image the next step we can do is quickly add a little bit of clarity and a little bit of texture to our photo these two adjustments really help to make your photo look a little bit more gritty and epic which is perfect for this particular look now before we leave this basic panel the temperature slider is something that can be helpful to use as well with a lot of these types of editing steps favoring more blue or cool color temperatures can sort of help to give your photo a more epic feel so let's just drag this down a little bit into the blue area so the whole image just feels a little bit cooler now let's go down and deal with our tone curve here in the point curve clicking on this option right there I'm gonna just add some contrast so drag down the shadows then I'm gonna drag up the midtones just a touch and then I'm gonna drag up the highlights just a touch as well. So now turning that on and off, we've basically just added a little bit of life into our photo. Although you might start to have one area look a little too dark or too bright, it's not to worry because we'll be going through later on to adjust the exposure of everything individually with our selective adjustments. Now with our tone curve adjustments done, let's go to the HSL adjustment. And this is a really important adjustment for our moody look because we don't want to have too much color that's too noticeable in our photo. We don't want things to look crazy saturated However, we don't want it to look black and white and totally gray, so we have to find this happy medium. We'll start things off by clicking on the hue adjustment, and you can go through all of these individual sliders, but if you've watched other videos on my channel, you know how I really like to use this sample option right here instead, just because it's a little bit faster. Clicking on that, I can now click to sample any hue in my photo, and I'll drag up or down with my mouse to change that color. So clicking on the ocean here, dragging up to change the hue one way or down to change the other way, and then I'll find something that I'm happy with. I'm gonna favor this slightly more greenish teal color and I'll go to the grass, sample that green, drag up or down to see the options I have. I think I'll drag down to add a little bit of yellow. I kind of like the complementary colors here going on. And that pretty much is all the hue adjustments that I'll do for this particular image. Next, I'll go to the saturation. Clicking on the saturation, once again, I'm gonna use my sample option. And what I'm gonna do is actually desaturate the most dominant color in the photo, which in this case is the ocean or these blues. So I'm gonna click on that, drag down just a touch to desaturate it a fair amount 
but still having some color left over in there. Then as for the grass, I want things to pop just a little bit because otherwise your whole photo looks really washed out. So for example, if I went like this, now our photo just feels a little too gray and dreary. So let's go and drag that up just a touch so that we have a bit of life left in the photo with this color. So that looks good to me right in there. Now let's go to our luminance adjustment and this is a really important adjustment for the sky in particular when you're making a dramatic edit. The luminance adjustment essentially controls the brightness of different colors in your photo. So clicking once again on the sample option, I'll click on the ocean, I'm gonna drag down like so. That's gonna darken up the whole background there for me really easily and it just totally changes the feel of the photo. It already feels way more gritty and dramatic than it did before. As for your secondary colors in the image, you can play around with it and see what you like. I'll click on the grass, drag up or down to see my options. In this case, I think I'll just drag up a touch on that and then go over to the yellows and sample that and drag up just a bit as well. So now turning that adjustment on and off, look at that huge difference that we've made to make our photo feel a lot more dramatic, mostly because of the desaturation and then the darker luminance value that we did to our most dominant color, which is the blue in the background. Now let's go and adjust our color grading adjustment. You can skip over this step if you would like, but I think it's sometimes nice to add just a few little color hues in there. Maybe add a little bit of blue to the midtones. If I hold the shift key, I can adjust the saturation. If you're new to this tool, then make sure to check out my previous video where I dive deep into everything you need to know about it. You can find it in the corner right now. But in this video, we're just gonna quickly go through it to make these dramatic adjustments. So adding a little bit of blue to the midtones, I'll then go to the midtones luminance and drag that down a touch to darken things. And I'll go to the shadows, play around with this, see what color options I have. There's not a whole lot that I want. Maybe I'll add just a little bit more blue in there by keeping it relatively desaturated right near the center. And then I'll leave that luminance set as is. Now as for the highlights, I'm not going to actually adjust this particular option, but I will go to the luminance and just drag that up. It's gonna brighten the highlights in my photo for me and help create that dramatic look even more without actually applying any color hue to the highlight exposure range. Now you can go through to your detail and then your lens corrections options. I'm just gonna remove chromatic aberration. Now for our last global adjustment down here in calibration, this is a really awesome final tool to use to refine the colors in your photo. So I'll start in the blue primary here and I'll play around with this slider, changing the hue adjustment. I'm gonna drag that down just a little bit and then I'm also gonna desaturate that a touch as well, like so. Now I'm gonna go to my greens, play around with this, maybe drag that up a little bit and then desaturate it as well. Going to the red primary, Play around with that one, maybe drag that to a negative value, and then increase the saturation a touch just so things don't feel too flat. So now we've done all of our global adjustments, so let's go and add our selective adjustments onto this photo because we could add a little bit more contrast into our background and we could definitely brighten up our foreground and our subject. So let's start by grabbing the adjustment brush, clicking right here, and then I'm going to make sure that my feather and flow and density are all at 100% so my brush is painted on really nicely. Now it's up to you if if you want to use auto mask this can be helpful if you're trying to go around specific edges and in this case I think I will use it just because I'm going along the edge of this cliff and I don't want to affect the ocean as much if you're unfamiliar with auto mask and how all of that works then make sure to check out my video talking all about that that you can find up in the corner right now as well so now I'll click and paint around the area that I want to adjust first in this case all of the foreground now I can't see my adjustment so I'll press O on my keyboard to view that mask this just makes life a lot easier when you're painting selective adjustments in Lightroom. So something like this, then I'll go and paint over my subject like that. And perfect. So now we have a good selection around our foreground. Press O to hide that mask. And then I'll go to my exposure adjustment, click and drag that up just a touch, and then add a hint of contrast back in there. You can play around with the exposure range sliders as well, just to refine things a little bit. So that looks much better to me right there. Now I want to go and apply a gradient filter to the sky of the photo just to add a little bit more darkening. But before I do, make sure to hit that like button down below or else I just can't continue this tutorial. I'm uh, just kidding. Okay, going back to our gradient filter adjustment, I'll click and drag this down like so. And I'm basically creating a large feather. If I press O on my keyboard, you can see where that is going to be adjusting. It fades from this end to this end. So the closer together these are, the more of a hard edge your gradient filter will have. So I'm gonna have a nice soft edge transitioning out onto the ocean like so 
pressing O to hide that. And then I want to darken and add some contrast. So I'm gonna bring down the exposure like so. Then I'm gonna bring down the shadows. I'm gonna bring down the blacks. But then I'll bring up the whites and as well with the highlights. And then finally we can adjust the contrast slider like so. And as a little extra something, we can use the dehaze slider. We'll click and drag that up. And this works really well to add a ton of moody contrast into our photo. So with all of that done, I'm happy with our adjustment. I'll click done. And now we have successfully made a dramatic moody edit here in Lightroom. So let's go and look at our before and after. Looking at our before and after, you can see how we've gone from a pretty bland, flat looking photo to something that feels a lot more epic, has a bunch of rich contrast and colors in it. And it just feels a lot more hardcore than our initial photo. So when you make these types of adjustments, what's important is that you have a good amount of contrast and you're favoring those darker tones in your photo. When you're doing those global adjustments, it can be challenging to get everything to look exactly how you want exposure wise. But then at the end, like we just did in this photo, you can go through with your selective adjustments and brighten or darken things up as needed because it really adds a nice final effect to your photo. Now, if you're a photographer who struggles to make your photos look exactly the way you want them, then you're going to love my new Lightroom course called Photo Editing Unlocked. In this course, I share the easiest ways to craft your very own editing style and discover what it takes to take your photos from point A to B. The way I do this is with something I like to call the five photo editing style pillars. And with these five pillars, you can basically take pieces of each to create any editing style you can imagine. This course has 20 in-depth tutorials, five Lightroom presets, and 16 raw images that you get to use and work with during the entire course. So if you want to learn more, more about this and what the five photo editing pillars are all about, then make sure to hit the link down in the description below to learn more and also enroll in the course. Anyways, guys, that's all I have for you for today. Again, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.